Welcome to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia and the magnificent Boulevard world. We're in the wonderful country of Greece counting down to knock out chaos. This is the Zone Boxing Show brought to you by AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Here we are, fight week has begun. We're all building up here to knock out chaos, which is going to be a magnificent fight card, obviously topped by Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou. Let's welcome in the guys, two former world champions, Darren Barker, Barry Jones. Let's go through the card. Let's go. I think the best place to start, I think, is Mark Chamberlain versus Gavin Gwynn, because we've been speaking about this one, Barry, for a while. I feel like with most of the fights on this card, they've gone under the radar a little bit, but you can understand because the card is that top heavy. Yeah, it's a really good fight because it's a huge setup for Mark Chamberlain, who... I'm not saying he doesn't deserve his shot, but it's a, a real leap in, in faith from his people who, who, are, who are guiding him because Gavin Gwynn is tough. He's fit, he's huge for the weight. <laughs> and, and, and also, and, and he's, he's been there and done it. So, you know, like he's been the B side his whole career and got to European level, be a European champion. That takes some doing, Ad, it really does. So, Chamberlain's got to hurt him early. He has the power to do it. And Chamberlain's a really good boxer. People forget. He done, you know, we remember him from his power with that lovely right hand, good left hook, especially the right hand. But what we don't remember, because of the, sh the stoppages, is how well he can box. But Gwyn doesn't allow you the space. But I would say you can hurt Gwyn early. He, he starts fast, but you can hurt him early. And if you can get on him early, before he's warmed up, before he's really warmed up and got used to the weight of the punches, then you have a chance. Maybe not to knock him out, but to wear him down. Yeah. Which, I would say Gavin Gwynn struggles with movers. We saw that in his last fight. We saw it against Joe Cordina, but Joe Cordina's a fantastic fighter. But th that's what gives Chamberlain you know, a, a chance. But it's a hard one. It is a tough one, but that's what we want, don't we? We, we, we want 50-50 fights, so we want guys going into the ring and us not knowing who's going to win. I, j I think it's a really good matchup. It's, it's the right time for Chamberlain for me. He's looked very, very good. Punches very hard. He's got a very good boxing brain. Also, like Gavin, fights at a higher output, and that's why I think this fight will be exciting. Speaking to Gavin Gwynn, he's got the bit between his teeth. He, he's experienced some real highs, a couple of lows, if you if you want to call them that. But that last fight, he didn't look that great, though it kind of went to plan as far as the ending's concerned against Emiliano. He, he got the stoppage via injury, albeit. But this is good timing, I think, for both. It's good timing for Gavin Gwyn to show that he's the more experienced, more seasoned fighter out of the two. But for Chamberlain, it's his time to announce himself on the big stage. Yeah, that, that's a, a European level fight. Let's go to what is 100% a world level fight. And that's Nick Ball versus Ray Vargas, WBC featherweight what? title on the line for that one. Obviously, Vargas, the current WBC featherweight champion. Uh, sell me on Nick Ball and I want you to sell me on Vargas. Sell me on Nick Ball first. Nick Ball's five for two, shouldn't be a featherweight. That's what you'd say <laughs> first of all. But it's a fantastic jab for a little guy. Like a Mike Tyson did, by the way, you know, too, too small for the weight, but had one of the best jabs in the division at the time. Nick Ball has that. He closes the distance. He gets from A to B very quickly. So you know, he gets in quick, and when he's there, he makes, he makes that time tell. He works really fast. He has power. It's not, it's not devastating power, but it is lots of power. But he works in bunches and bunches, and every punch is, is, is effective. He works a semicircle around your body, so he's hard to hit back. He's hard to grab hold of and tie up. But Vargas is experienced, I would say that much. Yeah, let's, let's he's a world champion. Yeah. First and foremost, he's proven world class. He's a world In champion. In different weight classes. In different ways. Well, Look, yeah. he stepped up against a super featherweight, <clears throat> got beaten by Oshaki Foster, who's a very good fighter, slippery, fast, nimble on his feet, he can move, he's a nightmare. But Vargas, at times, can be typically Mexican and other times not. And what I mean by that is he's willing to get stuck in. He's a vicious body puncher, but he can also keep it long. He's got very accurate shots. He's got quick hands and he's seasoned. Like I say, he's got that know-how. He knows he's world-class. So he's got experience in abundance. For me, this is a very good matchup. Similar to, you talk about Gavin Gwynn and Chamberlain. This is the right time, I feel, for Nick Ball. We spoke to him and he's confident. He's very, very confident. He feels this is his time. I'm a big fan and I've got a sneaky feeling Though he'll be the underdog, I, I think he could pull this off and, and fulfill a dream of becoming a world champion. Yeah, let's talk about the big boys, right? I, I want to, there's so many big heavyweight fights on this card, but I want to touch on Justice Hooney versus Kevin Narina. Because again, you, you mentioned Nick Ball stepping up there. Is this the right step up at the right time for Justice Hooney? A lot of expected of him, Barry. Yeah, I, th I think it is, you know, because Narina's a good fighter and a cruiserweight, he was fantastic. At heavyweight, he's been good, but he's, he's not a natural heavyweight. 
Huni is, is, is not only big and fast and technically good, he's non-stop. His engine's fantastic. Fresh as well, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. His, en his engine's fantastic, and I think that's going to be the problem for Lorena, who's not the quickest feet. He does like the way you, he, he likes to be for, come forward behind the jab. He does everything correct, but nothing extravagant. And I think with Huni, you know, his energy, I think that's just going to be too much for Lorena. Yeah, do you know what? I'm a big fan of Huni. Uh, not the biggest puncher, I will say, in his division, but he does a lot really, really well. I love the way he'll just sit in the pocket and he'll work away. His variation is brilliant and he'll skip, and we love this. To see fighters create more openings with their feet, skipping side to side, and he does it so quickly for a big guy. Lorena, though, speaking to him, he's got the bit between his teeth. Yep. You know, on a good run of form, two good fights, uh, two good wins, sorry, last time out, and... He fancies it. He, he kind of feels as if he's really representing South Africa. He's flying the flag and really wants to, to do good things and, and really cement South Africa as a big player in, in boxing. And for that, I think he's going to leave it all in the ring. I think confidence is a big thing and th there's a lot to like about that fight. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that first battle. Yeah, boxing's all about matchmaking. That could be a fantastic fight. I think it's been matched mm. very, very well, that one. Let's talk about the co-main event, which really could be a main event in any other card, really, couldn't it? And it probably should be as well. Zhili Zhang versus Joseph Parker, two guys that have had fantastic 2023s, are putting all on the line now as they match up in 2024. Pick a winner out of that one. But I want to jump straight in there. For me, this is the the biggest 50-50 on the card. I, I a few. Vargas I, Ball. Yeah, there I know, well, I know. Yeah. But for me, when I look at this, with the run of form that they're both on, this is, is exceptional. I, and I, and I, let's talk about that run of form as well. Obviously, uh, Joseph Parker beating Deontay Wilder, former WBC heavyweight champion, and Jili Zhang beating Joe Joyce back-to-back -back away from home in the UK. That's a run of form. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It is. I mean, it's a real pick -em. It's a real pick em. I can see pros and cons for both here, obviously, and I can see any kind of method of victory for both, which makes this really exciting. Honestly, it's a toss of a coin. There's, yeah. <laughs> you know, again, I'm just about to talk about the run of form, but they're both, the confidence is so high. I think the teams are going to play a big, big part in this fight because there's going to be times where it's going to be high level chess it's going to be a tactical affair they're going to slug it out at times and I feel the corners are going to be very valuable in those tough sticky situations I'm with Zhang and I have been for since, since uh, when you made. say that in terms of a percentage what 60 40 55 45 how much yeah, are you with 51 49 yeah be no, honest, I, I am like 60 40 60 40 okay yeah maybe maybe Maybe, maybe 60, 30. 30. No, no, yeah. no, seriously, go the other way. I'm, 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 I really favour Zhang. I do. I, I, and the reason why, I think Pac is on a great run of form, and he is, and Zhang's had some good wins. But what Zhang lacked in the Hergovic fight, where, he, where everyone thought he won, but he, he, he did great work for 25 seconds and did nothing for the rest of the round. Like in Jerry Forrest, you know, with, with the draw, he struggled. But in the, in the two, in the two um, Joe Joyce fights, he showed a better engine. So I just think if he has a good engine, and the way Parker boxing the last fight, Zhang's technically very good with heavy hands. That's my worry. That's, that, that's my worry. Parker's got to go back to the old Parker, in and out with his feet, and try and nick the fight that way. But I'm not quite sure he can. Yeah, for what it's worth, I'm 50-50 on this one. So um, I'm obviously putting my backside firmly on the fence. All right, let's talk about the main event. Anthony Joshua versus France Ngannou, former unified heavyweight champion of the world against former UFC heavyweight champion. None of us expected this. We all expected AJ to take on Deontay Wilder. Obviously, that didn't happen because of a certain Joseph Parker. Up steps Francis Ngannou, who shocked us last time, Barry. We were there yeah. last time. He shocked us against Tyson Fury. Can he shock us again against Anthony Joshua? Well, I think when you mentioned when you mentioned Ngannou, you could, anything can happen. I would say that. But you, you, if you think of it pragmatically, there's no chance he can beat him. Nothing pragmatic about boxing. No, I know that. But you have to, you have to, some, in some way, you have to think of things logically. You've got, <laughs> yeah. you've got a guy who, should, who might have boxed early in his career, but you know, we've, we've all played football. We don't play for Man United or Chelsea or whatever. Or Liverpool. Or Liverpool, Liverpool, sorry. Liverpool, yes, okay. That's all right. That's, that's okay. But you know what I mean? And so it's, you know, you've got a guy here who does the, who, like, Fury opens his hands, gives you opportunities to hit him. So when he's on form, he's, he, he makes you miss, makes you pay. When he's not on form, he's a big target to hit. Anthony Joshua will be in front of you, but his hands are high. So you've got a body there, but not a clear target to hit. So you've got to go looking for that target. That might force Ngannou to, where he boxed so structured in the, in, in, the, in the Fury fight, might start throwing shots over the top. When he does that, there's a gap down, there's a gap, sorry, there's a gap down the middle there. 
for, for Anthony Joshua to do what he does best, jab, jab, right hand. And I think that's what will be the key for Anthony Joshua, and I think he's a big favourite. Darren, final one for the, me. For me, it's big ifs for Nganu. On the flip side, AJ, it's about him sticking to a plan, which we know he can do. We know he can do that, but it's big ifs with Nganu. But if he does get close, if he does land a big shot, anything could happen here. Punches so, so hard, physically so strong. Can he get close is the big question. I'm expecting an AJ victory. There may be some times that I might have a look at Eddie Hearn and see his facial expression because he's going to be worried, uh, no doubt. And there may be some moments in the fight that favour Ngannou. But I just think AJ will stick to a disciplined game plan and I feel he could get the stoppage late on in this contest. I like it. That's what boxing's about, right? There, We gave you five fights and I don't think we convincingly picked a winner in all five and that's what it should be make sure you join us friday live on the zone make sure you buy it as well live on the zone.com because this is an event i'm sure you don't want to miss live on the zone worldwide friday march 8th joshua versus in his earthquake in power shot the world the left fury floor big shot from in now back into the ring he seeks to knock down and knock out but aj is back Three times world champ is on. It's all to fight for and knock out chaos. Live on the zone worldwide Friday, March 8th.